We're out at the little backyard R&D vineyard, and today we're going to talk about some options to try to protect your vines from a spring freeze or frost event. When you get a bad spring freeze or frost, after the buds are starting to kind of wake up from the winter, there's really not a lot of risk of the actual vine dying, but the real risk is that you're going to lose the fruit for that year. So a grapevine has primary buds, secondary buds, and tertiary buds. And ideally you want all of those little canes to come out of your primary buds. Those are going to be the most fruitful, fruitful buds. But if your primary buds die off in a freeze, like say they woke up, you had a bud burst, they start to leaf out and they freeze, well now you're stuck with your secondary buds and you might have pretty much lost your fruit for that year. Each stage of the bud is going to have a little bit of a different cold tolerance. So a dormant bud is going to be actually really, really cold tolerant. You're not going to have to worry a lot about a freeze. But as those buds go to the, the bud swell stage, they start to kind of puff up and become fuzzy. Now all of a sudden, you know, you might make it to 29 or 30 degrees and you're going to see a lot of bud die off. And when they actually go to bud burst or bud break, which is when they kind of puff out a little bit green, you get those kind of leaves starting to kind of crown out, it's really not going to have much cold tolerance at all. So even a, a you know, pretty light frost could start to cause some trouble. And when you get to the stage of a few leaves, you're really, really in trouble if you start to get into frosts or freezes. So let's talk about some options to try to protect your vineyard if something like that happens. Now, if you have a small enough vineyard, say you've just got one row of vines, you can try to just cover those vines, especially if you're just going to get a frost. So in this case, um, this is early May, we had a really, really bad freeze, um, kind of uncharacteristic about a week ago. And that's actually what I tried to do here. The ground temperature was 52 and a half degrees. And I was thinking I could kind of hold that um, warm ground air in because all I really have to do is bring the temperature up a couple degrees to save the vines. I would say if I've definitely learned a lot of things from that experience because to cover this size of a vineyard I needed to buy a couple of those 20 feet by 100 feet um, six mil plastic rolls and like it's like trying to manage a sailboat and try to hold it by your hands or a giant parachute I just probably wouldn't do it again. I've got some other options for the next time we get a big freeze event. And to tell you the truth, I put a temperature data logger inside the tarp and I put a data logger outside of the tarp. And it just didn't hold nearly as much ground temperature in as I was hoping. Now, where I did have the data logger, I had a small blowout. So it's hard to say if I did hold a little in. And the damage that we saw, anything that was leafed out already, died. Um, anything that was at bud burst died and I would say about half of everything that was at bud swell died. Now luckily at the bottom seems like the things at the sun facing side kind of leaf out first. So anything at the bottom was still dormant enough that I probably am going to have a decent say half crop of grapes this year. And with this vineyard being so young, that's actually going to be okay. So we kind of avoided it being too bad, but next year we're going to make sure that this never happens again. So some things that the bigger vineyards will do, um, covering it just isn't really a realistic option for them. So what they'll do is use often use wind machines. So if it's an air inversion that's causing the freeze, they can use a super huge, basically propeller and churn up that air to try to bring some of that warm air from the sky down. Not something that you can really do in your backyard vineyard. Another thing they'll do is, like in um, Switzerland, they'll use buckets of paraffin and just light five gallon buckets or 50 gallon buckets all through the vineyard. It'll look like a rows of candles. And it does a couple things. It kind of creates a small amount of heat, but it also creates a small layer of smoke to kind of prevent that radiant cooling coming from the sky. So again, like on a small vineyard like this, I wouldn't expect we could really make enough smoke to cause that protective layer. 
the heat's most likely gonna just blow right away and I'm probably gonna get the fire department called on me. So that's not really something you're probably gonna do in a backyard vineyard. You could try a bunch of propane heaters, but again, the amount of fuel required is just insane to protect a little small vineyard like this. And you're really, it's really gonna be just such a struggle to contain that heat, unless you did something like cover it plus heaters, then you run the risk of burning out your vines a little bit. So I think the best option when you're at a small vineyard like this uh, is really going to be micro sprinklers. So this is something that a lot of orchards will do and you'll also see it in vineyards. And the purpose isn't to water the vines. The purpose is actually to um, use the latent heat of that ice to protect the vines in a freeze event. So what you'll do, and this is actually what I'm going to do, is you'll put sprinklers, I'll put them on the tops of a couple of these posts and it'll just be like a light drizzle of rain over these vines on a really, really cold night, which is gonna be rare. I'm almost, I hope to almost never have to use it, but if I have to, I can. You wanna do something like 2,000 to 3,000 gallons per hour per acre to create that ice protective layer on the vines. On this little vineyard, what that means is um, about 100 gallons per hour for the whole vineyard. And on city, I'm on city water. Originally, I thought that probably was going to be unrealistic, but um, I pay about five dollars per thousand gallons. So I could look at maybe spending about um, four or five dollars in a night of protection, which is really pretty cheap when you consider the loss of crop that you can have um, in a bad freeze event. So those are all the ways I know to try to save your buds in the event of an unexpected freeze or frost. If you have any tricks up your sleeve, be sure to mention them in the comments below because I'd love to hear them. One thing I didn't mention is you can actually try to delay those buds from coming out of dormancy. So you can delay bud swell and bud burst. And the one way you can do this is you can do a double pruning. So you would prune the vines most of the way back. So if you're doing a cane pruning, you'd prune and lay down your canes on the wire. But instead of cutting those canes to the length you want and the number of buds you want, you might leave five or 10 or so extra buds on the end of those canes. And now that vine's gotta spread the energy out through a lot more buds. And it's just gonna kinda of slow that thing from coming out of dormancy. You can do this with cane pruning you can do it with spur pruning by just leaving quite a few extra buds on each spur. And I did a little bit of that and I was able to push the bud burst and bud break back a little bit, but this year it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. Stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed because pretty soon we're gonna have a video coming out on how to install a small budget-friendly micro sprinkler setup so you can icicle those vines and Try to save yourself in the event of a bad freeze. Also make sure to swing by my website, smartwinemaking.com. Thanks for watching.